When entering the Disney parks, you have to be able to suspend your disbelief and submit to the fantasy. And nowhere is this more apparent than when you see a five foot mouse or duck wandering around a turn of a century Main Street. And it's that kind of disconnect that requires us all to take an imaginative leap. But now, with the latest technological innovations, Disney is exploring new ways to bridge that gap between what we see in the movies and in TV shows and what is possible in reality. And so, let's dive into how Disney is planning to bring these characters to life like never before in this DSMY Deep Dive. On Disneyland's opening day in 1955, guests flooded through the gates not just for the immersive theming within the lands of yesterday, tomorrow and fantasy, but also for the opportunity to meet the characters that they loved so much. And despite the first character designs being borrowed from the ice capades being truly the makings of your worst nightmares, Walt knew that meeting these Disney characters would be an attraction to itself. And so Disney quickly set about designing and developing characters that looked more screen accurate, which took them on a design journey from these massive bobbleheads made of rebar with lifeless arms swinging down by their side, to then in 1962, the creation of the first generation of what is basically the Disney Park characters that we know today. And throughout the decades, there's been various design iterations and sculpting enhancements, and even articulated heads that are capable of blinking and moving facial features. But the biggest advancements came with the introduction of the Living Character Initiative in 2003, as this aimed to bring characters of unusual shapes and sizes to life like never before, through remote-controlled technological puppetry. And though some were short-lived, like the Lucky the Dinosaur walk-around character and Chef Remy's dinner cart and Epcot. Others proved to be extremely popular, such as the creation of a talking Mickey meet and greet experience, where you could actually talk to and interact with Mickey Mouse in two-way dialogue. However, despite its popularity, even this was eventually discontinued in 2018, with the reasoning being cost savings and a general reassessment of the methodology behind it. As for the experience to work, it required two people to essentially puppet Mickey, one handling the physical aspect and the other remotely operating preset voice commands. Whereas the digital puppetry that was used within the Turtle Talk with Crush attraction has got to be considered to be the most successful product of the Living Character Initiative, as this enabled one person to create a personal two-way character interaction with a large audience, allowing for higher capacity throughput and a greater return on investment. And so with the Living Character Initiative, the ambition was there, but the reliability of the technology and the practicality of the puppetry was not. Which brings us to today, as you see Disney Research has been developing three new projects that build upon what the Living Character Initiative started, but with the mission objective focused on bringing characters to life at true to life scale, like they've literally leapt off the silver screen. And so the first project is one that's official title is unknown, but it's what I'm going to nickname as Project Tiny, as it's aiming to deliver real-time, authentic, two-way interactions between guests and Disney's smallest characters at their true miniature scale. Now, the first glimpse that we received of this Disney Illusioneering Lab project came as part of a playtest at the Touch of Disney event before Disneyland's official reopening in April of 2021 where thanks to this video from Jen Tanaka, we can see that the playtest consists of a highly themed controlled walkthrough environment, integrated with elaborate props featuring holographic rear projection effects of varying techniques to make a believable, true to scale meet and greet with Tinkerbell. And this two way interaction between the guest and the character was supposedly made possible for the playtest using live performers in a remote green screen location. However, Disney is also exploring smaller animated characters as we can see here in this example of the Orange Bird character shown at the D23 Destination D conference in November of 2021. And the benefit of small animated characters like Chip and Dale, Jiminy Cricket or Chef Remy from Ratatouille is that these interactions could be pulled from a wide selection of preset responses that would then be digitally puppeted by a person. Or going one step further, considering that Imagineering has been researching the implementation of artificial 
artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms within the parks. This kind of projection-based character interaction could potentially be autonomously operated. However, personally, I feel that this illusioneering project is less about replacing the traditional meet and greets, but is instead a prototype for new attractions that could be walked through experiences that would use characters for the interactive storytelling. Then for the next project, we're going from little to large, catering to the other extreme of the size spectrum, with something that has been officially titled as Project Exo. And that's short for Exoskeleton. As this is using exoskeleton puppetry techniques combined with stilt walking, 3D printing, and articulated heads, arms, and hands to bring Disney's largest characters to the parks like never before. But this isn't the first time that Disney has tried their hand at the larger characters. As they have dabbled in stilt walking characters such as Divine the Living Vine at Animal Kingdom, the Pandora utility suit within Pandora the World of Avatar, or my own personal favourite, Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy at Disney California Adventure for the awesome dance-off show outside Mission Breakout. But Project XO is much more complicated than stilt walking, as the project's main objective is to provide more flexibility and mobility, rather than the strength enhancement that is seen in exoskeletons intended for military or industrial application. As traditionally, an exoskeleton is a mechanical intermediary that uses electric motors, pneumatics and hydraulics to enhance the natural skeletal movement with increased strength and endurance without any additional strain or exertion on the wearer. But Disney's exoskeleton is all about creating a greater range of motion and movement to deliver the best performance possible. And so there's been careful consideration over the choice of materials and techniques so that the performer is more comfortable, such as 3D printing lattice structures for the muscles and hands to reduce the weight and offer a more natural appearance, whereas the suit itself is redistributing the weight of the apparatus to the ground and with pneumatic assistance at the joints it is able to accentuate the movements of the performer. And this project isn't about bringing just one character to life such as the Hulk from the Avengers but it's being used as a basis for Imagineering to build upon and adapt these techniques for a whole new class of large format character in the park, such as Maui from Moana, Ralph from Wreck-It Ralph, The Beast from Beauty and the Beast, Thanos from The Avengers, and even creatures such as a Wampa from Star Wars. And despite this project already being in development for about two and a half years, Chairman of Disney Parks Experience and Products, Josh DeMauro, has stated that this is a top priority project that they are hoping will deliver larger-than-life interactions in the parks within the next couple of years. And then last, but definitely not least, we have what is easily Disney's most impressive and most ambitious project as of yet that is officially titled Project Kiwi. And this is a conceptual exploration project into bipedal advanced robotics coupled with animatronic technology, with the main objective of creating a self-balancing, independently walking animatronic character at true-to-life scale. And in the three years that this has been in research and development, the project has made some monumental advancements, not just within the themed entertainment industry, but also within the world of robotics as this couples together bipedal robotics with an onboard sensory package with animatronic facial expressions that will be capable of human-robot interactions in real time. And if you're wondering how all of this works, well, this extremely complicated process owes a lot to its innovative skeleton design that was inspired by the human skeleton. As the objective was to make the figure as light as possible, as the lighter it is, the less power it will require, and more realistically it will be able to move with up to 50 degrees of freedom. So the team started with custom printed polymer before moving to milled and cast armatures and segments to form an industrial printed metal skeleton. But this metal skeleton has what is called a marrow conduit, meaning that the bones are hollow much like our own. But instead of bone marrow, it allows air to flow throughout as a cooling system for the actuators and motors. And then to make it independently stand and walk, the legs have a system that uses a kinetic counterbalance that disperses the energy of the figure's gait across the custom gears and joints so that the feet placement or feet plant is the only base that it can use to support its own body. And on top of all of that, there is also a sensing software package that makes this two and a half foot tall 
small group figure, able to maintain eye contact, sense motion and gestures, and adapt in real time. But all of this innovation in the field of robotics is not new to Imagineering's research and development division. As if you simply peruse the Disney Research YouTube channel, you can see that teams have been working on this technology since at least September 2018. When this video was posted showcasing bipedal robots with leg mechanisms capable of six degrees of freedom. And so in the three years since then, Project Kiwi has come a long way to what has been previewed in 2021. Although, as this project makes further leaps toward onboard autonomy, the next stage will be a playtest with real guests within a controlled environment, before we'll see this eventually come to the parks. But Project Kiwi has many more possibilities beyond just Groot, as a simple reskinning of the existing unit could easily be used for other characters of a similar height range, such as Master Yoda from Star Wars, Rocket Raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy, and yes, even the main mouse himself, Mickey. However, looking beyond what we already know about these projects, many of these begin as smaller experimental initiatives within Disney research, such as what was known as the Stickman Project before it became the Stuntronic Aerial Acrobatic Robot that is capable of autonomously calculating the precise landing in real time with its onboard gyroscope arrays supported by laser range finding. And all of that technological advancement eventually made it possible for Spider-Man to web sling his way over Avengers Campus at Disney California Adventure. So looking at some of these projects, you can begin to see the early signs of what Imagineering may evolve into a larger project, such as the Snapbot reconfigurable legged robot that could prove to be extremely useful for moving beyond bipedal robots and instead create four-legged animal robots that could bring to life Simba, Bambi, or Dumbo. Then there's this hybrid hydrostatic transmission robot that could allow puppeteers to manually control characters in stationary positions that require a lot more animation, such as the Muppets, without putting strain on the performer. And then there's this eerily accurate and yet equally disconcerting realistic and interactive robot that could potentially level up all animatronics for future interactive experiences as well. And so one thing is abundantly clear, and that is with Disney's resounding commitment to innovative approaches and technological breaks, breakthroughs in this true-to-scale character initiative. Hopefully, hopefully the Disney parks in the coming years are going to be brimming with new life of all shapes and sizes like never before. But now it's over to you, the alternators, as I would like to know which character would you like to see brought to life within the Disney parks and also which technology would you use to make it work. And if you've enjoyed this video for today, then give this video a massive thumbs up and potentially share this DSMY deep dive with a friend. And with all that being said, I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.